we want to clarify something that may have gotten a little out of balance. We do want you to put yourself first in the sense that your only perspective is through the eyes of self. And so as you find thoughts that feel good to self, now you're connected to your source and now you have plenty of resources that you can flood to whatever is your object of attention. But we see a lot of people who are joyously helping others and it seems overtly putting others first and in doing so they are having great satisfaction and joy in the process of it. In other words, a mother who tends to her child is certainly putting her child in the position that you would call first, but she is getting enormous satisfaction from it because she is fulfilling something that she's intended for a very long time. So there's no discord in that. The discord comes in doing something for someone and resenting doing it. In other words, you are putting yourself first when you are serving others and joyful in the serving. The discord comes when you are feeling that your resources are limited and there's not enough of you to go around, and so you are doing it out of obligation rather than out of wanting to do it. So let's just back up and approach this whole subject a little differently, and let's call it allowing and resisting rather than doing for others or doing for myself. Allowing or resisting. So I can do for myself and allow the energy to flow, or I can do for others and allow the energy to flow, or I can do for myself and not allow the energy to flow or I can do for others and not allow the energy to flow. But it's it's not the action. It's not the function of what I'm doing. It's the function of how I'm feeling while I'm doing it, you see. So as we've been talking about these different emotional set points, we can feel that you have come a long way. In other words, you can feel that you have been coming more and more into self-appreciation, especially recently, but over time. It's something that everyone is born doing, and then many of you lose as you're trying to find your relationship to everyone else around you, and then most eventually come back around to it. In other words, you always do when you make your transition. Sometimes you see very little ones selfish enough to kick up, kick up a ruckus in order to make sure they get what they want and very old ones selfish enough to kick up, kick up a ruckus to make sure that they get what they want. But in neither of those cases is there alignment in the way we mean it. In other words, we don't want you to think that you have to kick up a ruckus in order to demand something from someone else. We want you to understand that the entire universe is ready to comply with you. You just have to find the balance that lets the universe comply. And so the way you do this, the way you selfishly put yourself back in the place that you allow well-being to flow to you in the way you deserve and in the way that is absolutely normal is just through trial and error. In other words, you throw some fits and see where it gets you. And you soften and appreciate and see where that gets you. In other words, it truly is person by person, subject by subject, just feeling your way until you feel it click into place. It really, really is that. So we can't give you one process or even one way of approaching this because there are lots of different subjects in your experience that might require a little different response from you. Because on some subjects, your vibration on the emotional scale is way up here in appreciation. On other subjects, it's over here in fear. In some subjects, it's over here in a feeling of overwhelmment. In some subjects, it's all the way up here in ecstasy and joy and satisfaction. And so there's no one way. you just got to pick a subject and then talk about it with one thing in mind as you've got your ear to the ground. How can I approach this subject, which must be important to me because it keeps coming up, in a way that feels increasingly better? So what we want you to feel, and it's what we've been talking about all day here today, is that the universe will provide anything and everything that you want. In other words, there are so many resources. This universe will accommodate all of you in delightful and effective ways. You just have to let yourself off the hook as being one who must find a provider. In other words, here is what we are saying. You're wanting to see universal forces call it god call it inner being call it universal forces call it source energy call it this energy stream of well-being call it whatever resonates well with you when you name it but try to accept that it will always provide for you 
In other words, if you could resist the temptation to explain how far you've come. Now, we know there is some sense of satisfaction in that because especially if you're here and you want to be someplace different, sometimes it is satisfying to say, well, look how far I've come. That gives me expectation that I can still go further. Yeah. And that's wonderful. We want to hear. But if you get too heavy handed in explaining where you've been, then that's why you say it feels like it's two different personalities. And it is two different personalities. There's the connected you and the disconnected you. Those are too strong of words because you're never disconnected. But there's the more allowing of who you are you and there's the less allowing of who you are you, you see. And you get so that you can feel which drum you're beating. And that's why it's an emotional journey. How I feel is everything and what I do is inconsequential. But how I feel about what I do is everything. But what I do does not make any real difference. And we want to guide you to that. But how about this? This is a different tact. How about everything that I think that I need to do is all in order to propel me to some place that when I get there, I think I will be happier. So everything that I am doing, no matter what it is, all of my lists of right and wrongs are all about me getting to a manifestation that I believe then I will be happier. So why don't I take a shortcut and just go get happy? <laughs> and once I get to that happy place and test it, we encourage you to test this. This is not a theory that we are practicing for the first time on humans. <laughs> this is... <laughs> the way the universe operates. In other words, the, everything about law of attraction and this inclusion-based universe is about this. And the happier you are, the more you allow all of the things that you've been saying you want. You see. So we have an assignment for you. We want you to please you first. And we want you to tell everyone else to take a flying leap. Only thing is, in your case, there are not that many others that you will be able to tell to take a flying leap. In other words, there are not a lot of others that are making demands on you. It is your own internal uh, contradictions. It's like Esther. She will say, I am free to do anything in the world that I choose to do. For me to ever be in a moment of complaining is as screwy as it gets. Because I'm in charge of everything about my life experience. And we say, yes, but you have these habits of thoughts that are carries over, carryovers from when you didn't believe that you were in charge of everything. Exactly. And you sort of have to release them just one triumphant whoosh at a time. Yes. Yes, indeed. It's an interesting thing when you stand all by yourself and realize that everything that has happened is coming to you by you. And then you say, but it's not turning out quite the way I wanted it to. So now I have to take responsibility and I must not be doing a very good job. That sort of enhances your own feeling of self-loathing. And so then we say, well, then blame it on your mother for a while and, 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 and try to relieve that sense. Give yourself some relief. And you say, oh, yes, that does feel better. And then there's my mother, there's my mate, there's the economy, there's the president, there's the government, uh, there's the past lives. In other words, I have a long list of things that I can, I can blame, but now I feel I have no control. And so we say, all right, regain control, take total responsibility for what's happened to you. You are in charge. And you say, oh, that feels so good for about a minute. And then you start the self-loathing all over again. In other words, uh, but somewhere in that process, you will bring yourself vibrationally back into alignment of, of trusting in the goodness that really is you. Yes. And this is our way of saying to you that it's not a straight and narrow path that you must make your way to. In other words, when you achieve vibrational alignment with your well-being... Around every corner is a potential satisfying of something that you want. Literally. And the reason that the universe is able to do that is because there are so many players. There is so much data. There is so much interaction. There has been so much already expansion. In other words, the ingredients are already here. And so it is another way we like to say it is when you ask for something, say you're asking for a relationship, immediately, at least, 
a hundred avenues to lead you directly to what your heart's desire would feel satisfied having are before you instantly. At least a hundred options. But if you're not in vibrational alignment with them, there might not, there might, might as well not be any. In other words, it, it's like, it's like your friend saying, Oh, I heard the most beautiful music being played from my radio all morning long. I had my radio dial set on 98.6 and it was rapturous. And you said, I didn't hear it. <laughs> well, did you have your radio dial set on 98.6? No. <laughs> so if you're tuned up, if you're in alignment with what you want, then it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. It's about vibrational alignment. By the time you are able to identify it in thought as a desire, it's done. If you can think it, the components are here and you can realize it as quickly as you line up with that. In other words, when, it, if you say, I want the, I want a prize. The universe says, very well, we will line up endless opportunities for you to have your prize. And when you say, but there is only one prize, the universe says, very well, we will make it very difficult for you. <laughs> and when you say, there is only one prize, and I think that person will get it, the universe says, very well, it will not be yours. In other words, your thoughts happen. But when you say, there is no shortage of prizes, the universe says, then pluck from those that please you. They are everywhere around you. When you say, but I am the only worthy one and no one else is worthy, the universe says, well, depends upon how they feel about them, not how you feel about them. In other words, um, your every thought affects your vibration, but that's all that affects your vibration. And your vibration is the only thing that ever affects your outcome. In other words, because every time you launch a preference, the universe has gone to work on fulfilling your preference and has taken great satisfaction in doing so. In other words, all of your future worlds have been envisioned and enjoyed by all that is non-physical. That's why it's in escrow ready for you to let it into your experience, you say. Wayne Dyer's book says, you will see it when you believe it. And we say to you, test the heck out of it. In other words, make yourself believe it. Show yourself. Think thoughts and watch them manifest. Think other thoughts. In other words, notice the correlation between what you think and feel and what happens. It's accurate every single time. Adjust the way you feel. Watch what happens. It's accurate every single time. But what's tricky about this is, and we keep coming back around to this here today, it's wonderful awareness, is that if I stand here and I want to be over there and I say I'm willing to do anything it takes to get over there, I've got a resistance within my vibration because of my inherent dissatisfaction with where I am. Where if I say it's lovely over here and it would be lovely over there, now I've softened that resistance. As I say, from my lovely vantage point where I feel blessed and worthy, I'm looking forward to more evidence of my blessedness and worthiness. Now you've got the whole gamut covered. In other words, can you feel how, how that just cleaned everything up, you see? So when you realize that you're tapped into the abundance of dollars or to the abundance of abundance, then... You don't have to worry about shortage because it flows in as fast as it flows out. Then you begin to take shortage out of the equation. Then you begin to take limitation out of the equation. Then you begin to expect somehow, some way, whatever you want to manifest. And that's when the distance between your dream and the realization of it becomes infin infinitesimal. And that's when you say, well, it's like magic. And we say, it isn't magic. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next